So how do you go from getting images like this to getting images like this? Well, this is my very first image I ever got as an astrophotographer. Well, not my very first one, but my very first one of the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is actually a pretty easy target for beginners, but obviously there's a lot more detail that needs to be resolved in this image. One of the biggest questions I had when I was a new astrophotographer is how do you get the lower half of the Orion Nebula? Well, actually, the, the main reason you're not getting probably the lower half of the Orion Nebula is either one, because you didn't take enough exposure time, and this is the biggest reason, or two, um, you're in a lot of light pollution, and uh, this can be a big cause of it. And so the way to actually get the lower part is to take tons of integration time. The more integration time you take, the more detail you're going to resolve and the more finer that detail is going to get. So, if I, for example, if I take 30 minutes, this is what I took on this photo, I believe. Um, it was my first photo ever of the Orion Nebula. I know it's pretty bad. Um, I basically took 30 minutes of this um, Orion Nebula. but. Obviously, as you can tell, there's barely any details. Maybe in the, like, the core is even overblown. But the reason why I only took 30 minutes is because I wanted to make an HDR image and I didn't really have the time to actually take a ton of photos. So what I did, and my, this one, this, this new image I got, is I took over seven hours of total integration time. It's a lot of data in there. And plus, I also had this filter called the Optolong L Extreme, which the other one I didn't use that because I'm in a light pollution zone with the Boral 7. This is taken from the exact same location. But one has a filter and one doesn't have a filter. So yes, you can obviously tell that this image of the Orion Nebula is much more defined. You can even see the lower half, you can see all the dust around the Orion Nebula, and you can also see much more the Running Man. Whereas in this image, the core is overblown, the stars look kind of weird. <laughs> and I honestly think the stars were weird because um, I had it more towards the corner of the image. What happened was, as you can see, the, since they didn't have a fuel flat at the time, there's a bunch of halos around it and the, it's kind of trailed a little bit. So you want to make sure, especially if you don't have a field flattener, you should probably make sure it's center as possible. Another thing that can significantly screw up your images is bad polar alignment, because if you technically get you know a little bit of trailing, yet yeah, not only is it going to affect the stars trailing, but it's also going to affect the blurriness and you know color and all the other stuff of the photo. It's going to affect a lot of stuff, the sharpness, everything. So you want to make sure it, the stars are around as, as round as possible. So this is way more important than you might think. And also another thing I would mention is that if you're stacking a deep sky stacker, here's another tip. Um, do not use average if you have a lot of, uh, you know, optical errors in your image. Because, like, for example, I had this problem with my Canon T7 where there was all these weird pixels all over the place. Like, I think they were hot pixels, but, and then I had a lot of weird dust spots and all sorts of weird pixels and weird stuff. So, I would use something more like Kappa Sigma clipping um, because that would really help remove any of those unnecessary pixels that aren't really supposed to be image the errors and stuff. So I would definitely remove um, those with Kappa Sigma clipping in Deep Sky Stacker. But the best way to stack, in my opinion, is Pix and Sight weighted batch preprocessing. That's the best, in, in my opinion. Has a lot more advanced features in it. But these are just some of the tips to help you get, you know, maybe better images. You know, the most important one by far is probably more integration time because more integration time you can get you a lot more data and a lot more results and you know a lot more defined detail. Another thing I would mention is you probably need a modded camera because a modded camera would help you gather a lot more data quick. Plus you capture the details you can't see without a modded camera. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Asher and I'm from Astrophotography Quest, you can see probably by now. Um, but I do astrophotography videos related to astrophotography. Um, I like to give tips, share my tricks with you guys and uh, if you like that kind of content, make sure to leave a like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And anyways, until next time, clear skies.